Before I get into cloud, I think it's important for us to take a giant step back and see where we came from and what eventually led to the cloud. There are different types of physical servers. I want to give you a preview of, let's say if you were to wind the clock back to 1980s or 1990s or even early 2000s for that matter, we would go ahead and buy, in this case, a tower server. Here we have a Dell PowerEdge T550 tower server. It's suited for small business. And it looks like a desktop computer. For those of us that actually have a desktop computer at home, it looks very familiar. So at the front of the computer, we got a couple of USB ports. We got the power button and all that jazz. On the back side, we got a power outlet. We got a VGA or we got an HDMI cable that connects to, to the monitor. And then we got a couple of network ethernet jacks that are basically network interface cards that allow us to connect to the network. So that's what we have in a tower server. Now in the middle of the screen, what you're looking at is a CPU, which is part of any server. You have all of these slots right here in the middle. These are all memory slots. And what you do is you insert memory chips. So these are all memory chips that are inserted in memory slots and that provides memory to us. And all of these are storage devices or hard drives that provide storage to us. And one additional component is we may have graphic cards or GPUs, graphical processing units within our server. And what has happened is over the years, software developers have realized that GPUs provide much better capability for running algorithms. They can process the algorithms, advanced algorithms at a really, really rapid, fast pace as compared to the general purpose CPU that we may have inside of our computer. So, to offload that functionality, we are now seeing GPUs as part of the server package for offloading those advanced mathematical algorithm functions. And that pretty much is what a tower server is in a nutshell. Now here's another type of server. As you can see, the difference is the previous server was vertical. This is horizontal. And this is a much slimmer version of that server that we were previously looking at. And I'll explain the purpose of this in a moment. But as you can see, front, very similar. We have a power button. We have a couple of USB ports. We have a mini LED display here, which actually shows us our IP address, which is very handy and neat. And at the bottom here, we're seeing how the backside looks like. So we got couple of power outlets, we got network interface ports, we got the VGA, we got USBs and all that. It's no different than the tower server. The only difference is the form factor. It's a 1U form factor. And what 1U in this case means, it's a one rack unit. So typically in a data center, we would have a rack that is 42U. That's the height of a typical data center server rack. And what we do is we take these servers, these one new pizza box, we also call them pizza boxes, and we slide them inside of that rack. And what that means, if it's a 42U rack, it means we can potentially insert and populate 42 of these servers in a single rack. Now that said, typically that's not how you do it. Typically you have different sections of the rack dedicated to different type of devices. So you may have servers at the bottom of the rack, but at the top of the rack, you are going to have a couple of switches. Typically, that's how a rack is designed. Now, here is an example of a Dell PowerEdge R650 rack server. It's typically designed for small to medium business. In the previous example, the tower server is more suited to very small business if you only have one location or maybe a couple of locations. This when you need a large data center environment, you're going to need these rack servers. And the next level beyond the rack servers is what we call blade servers. Okay. 
And what you're looking at on your screen is a Cisco UCS5108 chassis. And right now it's a blank chassis on your screen. And what this chassis is giving us the ability to do is as you can see, we have different slots. We have eight different slots to be exact. And we have the ability to insert eight half width blades in the server chassis or four full width blades, or we can have a mix of both. Now, let me show you another picture where the server is fully populated. And kind of taking a step back, Blade Server is a server enclosure with multiple modular circuit boards. And here in this architecture, these are B-series Blade Servers for UCS. By the way, UCS stands for Unified Computing System. And what we have here is, this right here is one server. This is half width. This is another half width. This right here is the third server. This right here is the fourth server. And then as you can see, the, the bottom half, we have two servers down here. And these are full width blades because they're taking up the entire width. So we have six servers in this instance installed in a mixed environment. Now, what are these servers for? We may be running different type of applications. We might be doing Cisco Unified Communications Manager, CUCM. We may have UCCE. We may be running different type of databases, et cetera. You name it. Any type of server you can think of, you can go ahead and throw on these servers. And the cool thing about the Blade servers is that they provide a very small hardware footprint because you can have a lot of horsepower all condensed into a very small footprint of this server. And by the way, on the back of the server, we are seeing the power outlets. And as you can see, the reason we have multiple power uh, supplies here is for power high availability and redundancy, because we don't want one power supply going out and bringing down our environment. And typically these servers are running critical business functions. This could be like your website. This could be the key database that all of your employees are using. So this is serious stuff. And you absolutely need to make sure that you have power redundancy. So typically you would wanna populate the uh, all of the power supplies. And it all comes down to how many blade servers you're using. If you're using maybe just two or three of half fit blades, you may get away with just having two power supplies for redundancy purposes. But if you're gonna fully populate the chassis, then you better have all slots for power supplies 100% populated. We also have fans on the back here, as you can see. And we also have these IO modules or fexes or fabric extenders, they connect us or the UCS chassis, I should say, to the rest of the network by uplinking to a fabric interconnect or an FI. In a practical data center design, you will actually have redundant FIs at the top acting as top of rack switches, providing redundancy and high availability for interconnecting each UCS chassis running mission critical applications. Hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, give me a thumbs up, hit subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.